I figure Greg Dunn's always a great conversation to have. And by the way, he's trying to make a run uh, at making his office look like our studio. Joining us on the Blue Frame Technology Hoopso Hotline, it's Greg Dunn in front of some really nice Brockport jerseys. Sir, good to see you. How are you? Good, Dave. Good. I, I know you had me on instead of Jason because I have the better haircut. So I mm. appreciate you doing that and, uh, mm. and, and putting Listen, us on there instead of him today. It's a battle for the haircut, I'll admit. The, the styling and profiling of the hair between you and Gre- you and Jason, it's a race. Mm-hmm. I, I Good call. Um, I'm not getting in between which one I like better. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, you guys went and beat them at their place. Now, there's a, there's a lot of talk about maybe they weren't at 100%. Doesn't matter. You went to Oswego on the lake and got a win on the road. That is huge. How important was that for you guys? Yeah, it was. I mean, we kind of. I think we kind of woke them up, right? Because since then they've been, uh, they've been not only winning games, they've been blowing everybody out. So, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, we maybe you op- maybe you opened up a beast. Yeah, I, I, I think we might have. We might have did that for sure. And yeah, I mean, they, they certainly were a little banged up. And I think we caught them on a night where they missed some shots that they normally won't miss. But um, you know, we had to come out and execute. And we executed the game plan well, and and. Uh, got a victory over them and that's their last loss and certainly you know Jason's done a great job there and, and you know that to, to, to go in there and, and beat them there you got to play your absolute best and follow game plan and I'm not sure we played our best because we didn't shoot the ball that well that night but man did we defend and follow game plan so it was a uh, it was a nice win for us, for sure. I did get a text message from another conference coach who said, have fun with Greg. He's a great chap. Uh, he was saying with a little tongue-in-cheek because, well, we always know you're a great chap, but you know this conference so well because you've been in this conference for such a long time. You, Oswego, maybe Cortland. It doesn't feel – listen, Suniac's always been known as a tough conference because there's tough travel and opponents are really tough. But I, I feel like it's not – had as many teams at the top battling it out as I've been used to. Is that fair? Is, is it is it a little bit different with a two-headed monster? Well, I, I think uh, the one that you missed that I think is really really good is Oneonta. Um, okay, they've got they've got five. They, they've got they're they're starting five, and then a couple come off the bench. I think are are national level guys. Um, they've got size. I, I, I believe that they're. I believe they're number one in rebounding margin in the country right now. If not number one, they're in the top five. And they're they're very, very good and played and beat us in the conference semifinal last year. Yep. And uh, and, and wound up losing Oswego, which we all were losing Oswego by big big numbers last year. So um, yeah, I, I think they're very, very good too. And yeah, I, I think the one that hasn't been at the top that, that maybe you're accustomed to, um, is Plattsburgh. Plattsburgh hasn't been where they normally have been, but it's true. Um, Mike Blaine, who you know well, um, he said to say hi. By the way, and uh, Mike guess who texted me? Good job, and they've had a they've had a nice bounce back this year. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, it, it's certainly there, there's been some new faces. And uh, you, you mentioned the travel. It took us it took us almost eight and a half hours to get from Brockport to Plattsburgh last Thursday night, and then another three and a half due to weather from Plattsburgh to Potsdam. So. Those are the kind of trips that you, you potentially have in the SUNYAC every every weekend, and uh, they're tough on everybody involved, sure. Um, Mike was the one who texted me, by the way, the one I alluded to. Out of, he's got nothing else to do in Plattsburgh except maybe go visit Montreal. Go. Um, no, good good tidbit on Oriente because they're the one two and a half games behind you guys uh, with Cortland three games behind you guys. And I'm saying you and Oswego, there's, it's a tie right now, a 10-1 in conference play. Uh, and then it's the rest. At New Paltz, the only other one above 500 in conference action, and really the only other one above 500 overall either. They're at 500. Geneseo, Potts, and Plattsburgh, Fredonia, and Buffalo State round out the rankings. I, it's The one disadvantage is it's a long haul between you and Oswego. Your advantage is you get the short haul tomorrow when you go down to Geneseo, the real short trip. I, I know we've talked about the travel in nauseam, but I remember hearing rumors recently of, wanting to expand the SUNYACs and get more SUNYACs in. Uh, the ones that aren't in the conference, get them in like Morrisville and all those. That has its own issues. I'm curious from your perspective, how can we improve, how can the conference improve with the travel aspect of things, but still keep that SUNYAC feel of a, of a tough conference? Is there a solution or is this what we got? I, I mean, look, take, t- take the travel away. Um, I, I do like playing playing everybody twice, right? Um, that's, 
you know, that, that that's the fairest way of doing it um, to play for a conference championship. I heard you speaking earlier, but uh, earlier, it's not always uh, with the Concordia women's coach. And you know, it's, when you're playing a ton of league games, it's not always as we know. And you guys have spoke about it at length on your show. Um, the best formula right. to potentially get more than one team in the NCAA tournament, right? But right. If, if going after and talking about trying to win your conference championship, playing twice is great. Um, there has been different ways. We, we've done an East-West model in the past yep. in my tenure. Um, that's been moved away from. Um, that's been talked about as well. And and, 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 I'm, and, I'm, and I'm sure, if, you know, I haven't really even thought about what expanding would do and how that would even look like. Um, but it, it certainly, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure. It, it definitely wouldn't make us travel any more than we actually are, right? Because the Sunnis that you're talking about are kind of, shoved in the middle of the state in central, in central New York. So if we did go that way, it, it could shorten up travel a bit. Yeah, I mean, I know there's no perfect solution. We're not going to come up with it right now, but it's good to hear kind of that take on things. Because, again, you guys, especially in the middle of winter, and it's been brutal up there in New York and very different from what, you know, what they're experiencing in Plattsburgh is very different than what they've been experiencing in Oswego and Buffalo State and everywhere else. Um, so I appreciate that. Let me just talk about your team. Uh, led by... Uh, Beckett, Mackay? Mackay, yeah. Mackay, Mackay, I'm overthinking it. Mackay, Beckett, you know, nearly 19 points a game, five rebounds per contest, uh, shoots 46% from the floor, nearly 40% from deep. And by the way, don't foul him because he's going to get about three quarters of those free throws converted as well. Jahidi Wallace is second on the team at 13 points a game, nearly 13 points from David Grady. Uh, Tony Arnold is at 11 points a game. And then there's a steep drop-off, and I think that's what I think is interesting. A lot of teams we talk to today and, and over time, you might get a couple of double-figure players, but there's a couple right behind them who are not in double figures but still scoring. You go from 11 points to 5 points per game. It's, it's a little bit top-heavy in that sense, is it not? It is. As far as scoring the ball, you're absolutely right. Um, the, the, the reason why I look at it and don't think it's a huge disadvantage, the guys that aren't putting the ball in the basket are the guys that guard the other team's best players every night. They're the guys that we expect to take charges. They're the guys that we expect to distribute the ball. They're the, they're the guys that we call our go-get-the-ball guys when we really need to get a big loose ball. Um, and all of them, there's kind of like three or four of them in that mix, are all very capable of being that fifth scorer for us on a given night. So uh, putting the ball in the basket consistently, consistently excuse me, you're, you're definitely correct with those four. But we've been fortunate enough, and we're having the season, kind of season that we're having because one of those three or four other guys is stepping up on each night to help us shoulder the load a little bit as far as scoring the ball. What's also interesting is you've got a mix there because two are seniors and two are sophomores. The seniors are Wallace and Grady. The, soft, uh, the sophomores are Beckett and Arnold. So you do have a bit of a mix there in terms of upperclassmen, underclassmen, and contributions therein. I know the seniors have a role, but how important is it that everybody from all classes are, are figuring out how to make this team click, and will that be a huge benefit as the season grinds on? So, you know, it's an interesting mix that we have right now, Dave, because, you know, two years ago, COVID season, we're in the Sweet 16, gets canceled. Um, from that team, I only have two guys that were on that on that team with me today, only one in the starting lineup, and that's Wallace. So. Yeah. Wallace and Devontae Jones are the only two guys that have been in our program for more than a year. We have Grady, who was a transfer, um, and then a bunch of freshmen and sophomores that are in the mix. So, um, you, you know, early on, it was kind of just trying to find identity, right? Like, what's going to be your role on the team? What's your expectation to help us win games? And, and I think right now, um, you know, we, we – Guys have found their identity. They understand what we need them to do to help help win a game. And uh, I, th I think guys are filling the roles nicely that way. I've got to grind ahead of you. Again, it's not over by any stretch of the imagination. Um, sorry, I'm double-checking so I don't get it wrong. Obviously, you still have the game against Oswego. That'll be your penultimate game at home. You'll finish with Oswego and Buffalo State. But... You're on the road, as we mentioned, at Geneseo, that you know, 45 minute to an hour travel tomorrow. Uh, Potsdam and, and Plattsburgh will be home games, then road only on to Platt, New, Plot, New Paltz, geez, and then back home. So you get the alternation, which is common. 
how 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 do you how do you prep the team for the grind here? How do you get them focused? Yes, at the game at hand, but understanding there's a lot at stake here. It'd be great if the conference tournament, obviously, was coming through uh, Tuttle North Gymnasium. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, you know, that's that's the goal to try to to try to make sure it's at, at our place. But you know, like like you said, Dave, and I, I don't want to be too coach speak with you here. Like that's 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 a long ways down the road. Um, you know, we've had a bunch of games that we won close. Um, you know, and uh, you know, the, to, to look ahead to Geneseo and not look at the Geneseo, you, know, you know, the teams that are in front of us. This is truly a team right now with our youth that that we we got to make sure we're taking care of it. The, the, the one ahead of us, and uh, you know, I've had a lot of people. Hey, what about you know national rankings? You guys aren't ranked. What's the regional rankings going to be like? Do you have a shot in an at-large bid? We just got to control what's in front of us. Um, I, I think if we do that, that stuff will take care of itself and you know um it's uh but yeah to, to your point i would be completely lying to you if you said the ultimate goal is to make sure that that suniac tournament is is played at our place because um i don't think anybody wants to go in and play a swigo at a swigo after getting a w there yeah no that's yeah that's true too you get the win there and then you got to go back that would that, that would kind of sting just a little bit well, we've asked all the coaches just to pivot a little bit um with, you know the concordia chicago scenario uh, the situation at Albion and now the the, the case at, at Mary Hart and Baylor are all very different, but all part of the overall coaching um, world, as it were. The language you use, the the efforts you make, the histrionics or whatever you need to manage or utilize to keep your team motivated, to get the message across, whatever it is. You've been in coaching a long time. I'm pretty sure what you were doing at the beginning of your coaching days are not what you're doing now. And that's not a knock, just things change in a lot of ways. But how difficult or how challenging is it, not in a negative light, but just in the sense of understanding your team and being a state institution, you get different players than some others do. They come from different backgrounds and they have different goals. Sure. So, um, you know, I've got this question from, from more than just you, right, Dave? And, and for, for me, first, it starts with, with relationships with your team, right? Building relationships to the, to the point where, you know, they allow you to coach them hard because they know that you have their best interest in mind and the program's best interest in mind and try to kind of cultivate that family atmosphere of, you know, we're all in this together. And, you know, as far as the, 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 the language is concerned, um, I, I'm by no means a, a, a saint when it comes to that. And, but it's gotten a little bit better since I was 29 years old when I first. Let's got be honest, out. Greg. There aren't a lot of saints out there when it comes to language. Yeah, so it's um, you know, for me, it, as far as coaching guys hard, I don't think things have really changed all that much. It, to, to me, at the base level, if you're creating that relationship with them, where they know that they can trust you and you can trust them, right? And you go into practice and they feel like you all you have their best interest in mind, not only yourself but the staff. Young people still want to be coached, and they'll still accept coaching. Now, is it a little bit different maybe as to um, how they handle it after? Do they ask a little bit more questions after the fact? Um, yeah, that, that, that may happen, but um, I honestly don't see that much of a, a, of a difference other than, um, you know, in certain environments, you just got to be careful what you say, who's around, et cetera. Absolutely fair, uh, and I appreciate the insight, and that's why we're asking coaches, because everybody's got a different perspective on it from their world, and every world is a little bit different, and it's also based on the institution you're at. It's based on a lot of other X factors that we can't all account for, so I appreciate that. Yeah, um, I totally agree with that. Appreciate your time. Great to hear more about Brockport. Yeah, I, I remember that magic you guys produced uh, at Johns Hopkins in what we didn't realize was going to be the norm for a while. Empty gymnasiums took full advantage of that. You guys, right? Yeah, that, right. Was, yeah, that, was, right the year, that yeah. was the year before. Oh, that I was the year before, right. You were there the year before, before and knocked every, right. Yep. See, I knew I'd convert. Something didn't seem right about that. Yep, and then the, the COVID year was at our place. and we, we Right, had you us. were at your place. Right. Sorry about that. Place. Yes, because I, I, I remember you guys kind of, uh, it, it wasn't the second round game everybody expected it to be. 
and you guys put on you guys put on a show that year. And I'm sorry, yes, the next year you were at your place uh, when everything came unglued after that. But sorry, <laughs> it's well, all starting to blur together. It's, it's sad. Like you see a lot of a lot of basketball. Yeah, right just there. just a wee bit. I should remember it better though. Um, but thanks for the time. I appreciate the insight and, and your conversation. Always good to chat with you, and I appreciate you coming on. Listen, we're going to have to do a side-by-side -side between you and Jason. We'll figure it out. Um, right. Have a little competition, maybe. Um, see if he's even paying attention to any of this. Uh, in the meantime, we always give the guests the final word. Any final thoughts you want to share with those who may be tuned in? No, they appreciate all you do. Um, you know, just to, to everybody that's not familiar with the SUNYAC, um, good style of basketball, pay attention. Um, I love our league this year. I think there's a bunch of really good teams at the top, and uh, it's going to be fun here to, to, to end the year. Good luck to our women's team, um, who's also in a battle as well. And uh, shout-out to my little kid, Sis, who's the uh, women's coach at Nazareth College. Her team's having a, a nice year as well. Yeah, good call, sir. Uh, yeah, Nazareth worth watching, to say the least, on both the men's and women's side. Uh, we didn't even get into the East conversation there because we just didn't have a tough time, but the East is fascinating to watch. Two good teams over there, no doubt about it. Yeah, U Oswego, Rochester, Nazareth, St. John Fisher with a big win over Naz this yes. week. Greg, thanks for the time. Take care of yourself. Look forward to catching up with you down the road. Thanks so much, Dave. Appreciate it. Greg Dunn joining us on the Blue Frame Technology Hoopsaw Hotline out of Brockport.